Hi everyone, today I'm coming to you from Baker Drive Community Park. I brought my children over to the playground up there and I'm going to just sit here and read a story to you. Crossing over the gully. Trevor and his sister Betty were hurrying to get home from school. The sky was black and they knew it was going to rain. They had to hurry because they had to cross a gully on the way. There was a little wooden footbridge across the gully, but sometimes when the gully came down, the water was high and it flowed very quickly. Then it was dangerous to cross the bridge. Lightning flashed across the sky. Then the children heard thunder. I wonder if we will get to the gully before the rain starts, said Betty. We have to, replied Trevor. Where will we sleep if we don't cross over? I know, said Betty, but the sky is so black. Maybe it's raining up in the hills where the gully starts. In that case, there will be plenty of water in the gully already. Don't even think about that, said Trevor. Just as he spoke, the children felt the first drops of rain. They started to run as the drops got bigger and bigger. Soon the rain was falling quite heavily and water started to run along the sides of the road. They were almost at the gully when they heard the noise of water. I told you, said Betty, water is in the gully already. It must have been raining in the hills. Just hurry up, replied Trevor. Maybe there is not too much water yet and we can still use the bridge. But when they got to the gully, they saw that there was a lot of water flowing in it. The brown muddy water rushed along carrying old pans, tires, rocks and pieces of bush. People were standing on the road and along the sides of the gully. Some had covered their heads with pieces of newspaper. Others had on hats or raincoats. Everybody was looking at the muddy water. Come, said Trevor, the water is not up to the bridge yet. I'm not sure if we should try to cross over, said Betty. I don't see anyone else using the bridge. I think they are just watching the water, replied Trevor. People always come to look at the gully when it comes down. The longer we wait, the higher the water will get. I'm afraid, said Betty. The water is high already. Look at the bridge. Look at how the water is splashing up against it. Trevor looked at the bridge long wooden poles held it up. In places, bush had piled up against these poles. Sometimes the water would splash up as it flowed around the piles of bush. The water is just splashing up a little, said Trevor. Come on! And he held on to Betty's hand. No, said Betty, pulling back. The bridge looks as if it is shaking. It is not shaking, he shouted. Are you going to wait till the water is right over the bridge? Where are you going to sleep tonight? Betty did not move. All right then, said Trevor in an angry voice. I'm going to leave you. And he started heading for the bridge. Come back, Trevor. Come back, shouted Betty. But Trevor had gone. As he ran by some men, one of them grabbed him. Where are you going, little boy? Asked the man. You can't use the bridge now. Let me go, shouted Trevor, as he tried to pull away from the man. The man let him go. He did not believe that Trevor would still try to cross over the bridge, but Trevor started off again. Onto the bridge he rushed before anybody else could stop him. He had only gone a little way when suddenly the poles under the bridge began to shake. Trevor could feel the bridge rocking from side to side. He turned and looked at the people on the bank. They were all shouting and waving at him. He knew he had to get back. Trevor started running as quickly as he could, but it was not easy because the bridge was shaking. He did not want to slip and fall into the rushing muddy water. He was almost at the end when there was a loud noise. Trevor could feel the bridge falling over and he cried out. Strong hands grabbed him. He could feel the water pulling at his legs, but the hands held onto him. Then somebody pulled him up onto the bank. Trevor was so frightened that he could not move. He just held onto the man who had grabbed him. 
He could hear people talking all around him. Then he heard the man speaking to him. It's all right now. You are safe, he said. But you did a very foolish thing. Never do that again. Trevor looked up. He saw that it was the man who had tried to stop him before. Thank you for saving me, he said. Then Betty came running up to him. Oh, Trevor, she said as she held on to him. I was so frightened. The two children stood and looked at the gully. Nothing else was left of the bridge but a few poles. Well, said Betty, even after the water runs off, we can't go home. Don't worry about that, said the man. I'll take you to the police station. They will look after you there till your parents can come for you. The important thing is that the two of you are safe. Betty and Trevor knew that the man was right. Nothing else was as important as that. The end. So that was the last story for Child's Month 2021. And as this story shows, children are very impulsive they do not make good choices all the time so we have to always look out for them we must show them our love and support all the way i'm glad the man in this story was calm and gentle and he showed compassion even after the child was disobedient because many people do not do that if a child is disobedient then we feel like we should leave them up to their own will and that usually lands them in more trouble than what is necessary so i hope you liked the story if you did